compared to their French counterparts, Three Lions also lack a well-organized squad. What sets the Three Lions apart from the rest is their star-studded lineup and create their own moments of brilliance. Not many people would dare to attempt an overhead kick like Jude Bellingham in that situation. Saka's decisive finish was also truly world-class. The deeper the game goes, the more opportunities England will have to showcase their pragmatic style of play. If you thought England would need extra time to settle their semi-final clash with the Netherlands, you're not alone. Just two years ago, the Netherlands were knocked out of the World Cup quarterfinals by Argentina on penalties. That memory still lingers, and it's likely that the Orange will be keen to avoid a similar fate this time around, aiming to secure victory within the 90 minutes. To achieve this, the Dutch are placing their trust in Cody Gakpo. With three goals so far, Gakpo is currently leading the race for the Euro 2024 Golden Boot. He's tied with Jamal Muziala, Jack Michel Tadget, and Evan Stran. Gakpo maintains his scoring streak against England. The Liverpool forward will be in a strong position to claim the Golden Boot. While Cody Gakpo is the attacking inspiration, the Dutch defence is anchored by the reliable Virgil van Dijk. After facing criticism for an inconsistent group stage performance, Van Dyke has bounced back impressively in the knockout rounds, silencing his doubters. The 33-year-old has marshaled the Dutch defense with his trademark authority, much like he's done consistently for Liverpool over the years. His leadership played a crucial role in their victories against Romania and Turkey. At Signal Iduna Park, the battle between Van Dyke and Harry Kane will be a key factor in deciding the outcome of this semi-final. Despite not hitting his usual goal-scoring heights in this tournament, Kane remains a pivotal figure in Gareth Southgate's team. Going head-to-head -head with Van Dijk will undoubtedly be a significant challenge for the England captain. The two are well acquainted, having faced each other numerous times in the Premier League during Kane's time at Tottenham Hotspur. Reaching the semi-finals means there are no weak teams left. England has excellent players, and so do we. Gareth Southgate's side is looking for an open attacking game, we're ready for it. Those were the confident words of Dutch coach Ronald Koeman during the pre-match press conference. Historically, England and the Netherlands have met a total of 22 times. The head-to-head -head record is fairly even, with the three Lions winning six times the Oranja edging ahead with seven victories, and the two sides drawing five times. In recent years, encounters between England and the Netherlands have been relatively infrequent. Their last meeting was in the UEFA Nations League semi-final five years ago, where Ronald Koeman's Netherlands triumphed over England with a 3-1 scoreline. One of the scorers for the Netherlands that day was Quincy Promes, who was recently sentenced to six years in prison for drug traffic. The other goal scorer, Matthias De Ligt, has had a frustrating Euro 2024 campaign, spending much of it on the bench. Looking back at the history of matches between England and the Netherlands, a striking nine of them have ended in draws. It wouldn't be a surprise if that scenario plays out again after 90 minutes at Signal Iduna Park. If given the chance, we'll continue to stay true to our style, with the intention of taking the match to a penalty shootout. The English have their reasons, especially when they showed how good they were at penalties in the quarterfinals. All five shots were successfully completed by the three Lions stars. None a scratch to see Switzerland out of the game. The confidence of the England team lies in the fact that they are using a lot of penalty specialists in the squad. Cole Palmer has scored nine out of nine penalties, 11 meters at Chelsea last season. Ivan Toney is also the penalty taker at Brantford, while Chad Alexander-Arnold is also an expert in set pieces at Liverpool. That's not to mention the three Lions also using Harry Kane, who is also extremely reliable from 11 meters. In terms of the squad situation, both teams did not record any absences, whether it's an injury or a suspension. England and the Netherlands have met a total of 22 times. The head-to-head -head record is fairly even, the three Lions winning six times, the Orang edging ahead with seven victories, and the two sides drawing five times. In recent years, encounters between England and the Netherlands have been relatively infrequent. 
Their last meeting was in the UEFA Nations League semi-final five years ago, where Ronald Koeman's Netherlands triumphed over England with a 3-1 scoreline. One of the scorers for the Netherlands that day was Quincy Promes, who was recently sentenced to six years in prison for drug traffic. The other goal scorer, Matthijs De Ligt, has had a frustrating Euro 2024 campaign, spending much of it on the bench. Looking back at the history of matches between England and the Netherlands, a striking nine of them have ended in draws. It wouldn't be a surprise if that scenario plays out again after 90 minutes at Signal Iduna Park. If given the chance, we'll continue to stay true to our style, with the intention of taking the match to a penalty shootout. The English have their reasons, especially when they showed how good they were at penalties in the quarterfinals. All five shots were successfully completed by the three Lions stars, none a scratch to see Switzerland out of the game. The confidence of the England team lies in the fact that they are using a lot of penalty specialists in the squad. Cole Palmer has scored nine out of nine penalty, 11 meters at Chelsea last season. Ivan Toney is also the penalty taker at Brantford, while Chad Alexander-Arnold is also an expert in set pieces at Liverpool. That's not to mention the three Lions, also using Harry Kane, who is also extremely reliable from 11 meters. In terms of the squad situation, both teams did not record any absences, whether it's an injury or a suspension. As for England, they are also delighted to welcome back Luxor and Mark Wary for the final. In the quarterfinals, Luxor finally had his first minutes breathing the atmosphere of Europe when he was brought on in the second half. Initially on the entry list, Saubat considered the MU defender a gamble when deciding to take him to recover from injury in the knockout round. Also with absolute peace of mind about personnel, the Netherlands also has a full complement of soldiers and generals compete with England. Right now, there will be predictions for the starting lineups of the two teams for the crucial final. On the England side, Gareth Southgate is likely will keep the 3-4-3 formation, an arrangement that helped England play less cramped than the four-defender formation. But some positions will definitely change. First is the left wing back, where the return of Luxor will push Kyrian Chippier to the bench. At the left center back position, Way he will also replace Esprit Corsa, the worst player in the three Lions defense in the quarterfinal match against Switzerland. All other stars will be kept unchanged, fight the Netherlands. On the other side, Ronald Kramer would be foolish to change the entire starting lineup that has been running smoothly since the round of 16. This 11-man squad is likely will still start for the third time in a row. That is the notable appearance of Van Dyke and AK in defense. Once a prodigy, Savvy Simmons will be responsible for linking the gameplay of the midfield. And above is a Cody Garbo who is having a truly sublime Euro. The orange whirlwind is ready to sweep away the English. Southgate's Black Magic and the Billion Pound Star cast are also ready. And the epilogue of the second semi-final, Euro 2024, will come to us on the morning of this 5th.